Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have a slightly more complicated problem. We have two blocks, one on top of the other. There's a force pushing on the top block at an angle of 30 degrees. Notice the coefficient of friction between the two blocks and between the second block and the surface. We're trying to find the maximum force that can be applied to block number one in such a way that block one will not slide across block two but that will stay together due to the force of friction between them. And then for part B, once we establish what that maximum force is, what is the acceleration of the system? Presuming that the force is sufficient to accelerate the entire system over, of course, despite, I should say, the friction force between the two blocks here and the surface. All right, let's start with the first part. What's the maximum force? To do that, to comprehend what that looks like, let's divide that force into the vertical and horizontal components. Here we have the force in the y direction, which is equal to F times the sine of 30 degrees. And here we have F in the x direction, which is equal to F times the cosine of 30 degrees. So those are the two components, which will now help us determine the forces between the two surfaces here. Well, for one, we have the weight of M1 pushing down on M2. So we have M1. 1g due to gravity pushing down on the second block and we have the second component or I should say the vertical component of this force pushing down on m1 which also pushes down on m2. So we have f in the y direction which is f times the sine of 30 degrees and since the sine of 30 is equal to 0.5 that would be equal to 0.5 times the force. Of course there'll now be an a force pushing back, the normal force, let's call it N1, and that is going to be equal to the sum of these two forces, so it's going to be M1g plus 0.5 times F, which causes a friction force to exist in this direction. There will be force friction 1, which is the normal force times mu, which is M1g plus 0.5F, that's the normal force times mu sub 1. All right, we're now ready to try to find the maximum force. We know that the maximum force is such that this component, F sub x, must be less than or equal to the friction force. Otherwise, block 1 will begin to slide across block 2, which means that F sub x must be less than or equal to the friction force Fr1. F sub x is, of course, F times the cosine of 30. Since the cosine of 30 is equal to 0.866, we can say 0.866F is less than or equal to the friction force, which is M1g plus 0.5F multiplied times mu sub 1, which is 0.4, which means that 0.866F is less than or equal to 0.4 times m1, m1 is 3, g is 9.8, and then plus 0.5 times 0.4, which is 0.2 times f. Subtracting this from both sides, so moving this over here, we get 0.666f is less than or equal to 0.4 times 3 times 9.8, and finally, F must be less than or equal to, now we need a calculator, 0.4 times 3 times 9.8 divided by 0.666 equals, and we have 17.66 newtons. So we want the force applied to be no greater than 17.66 newtons, or block 1 will begin to slide across block 2. Now, assuming that that is the force now acting on both blocks together, because we now know that the friction force between them is sufficient to hold those together, if the force is this or less, now what will be the acceleration of the total system? The acceleration of the total system, acceleration will be the net force divided by the total mass. The question now is, what is the net force on the whole system? To figure that out, we need to figure out all the forces that are pushing down on the surface, on the floor here. 
based upon the weight of these two plus the y component of the force pushing down here as well. So we have the weight of the second block, m2g, we have the weight of the first block, m1g, and we have the y component of the force, f sub y, which is equal to f times the sine of 30 degrees, which is 0.5f. So that's the force pushing down on the bottom surface of block M2, which is pushing down on the, the ground here. The ground, of course, is going to be pushing back with a normal force. N2, and what we can say is that the normal force N2 is going to be the sum of all these forces right here, which is M2G plus M1G plus the force in the y direction, which is 0.5F. That's going to be the normal force of the floor pushing back against block 2, which causes a friction force, right here, friction force 2, which is N2 times mu2. And so the friction force is going to be equal to N2, which is M2G plus M1G plus 0.5F. That's the total normal force multiplied times mu sub 2 which is 0.2. Now we're ready to plug in the net force. The net force is going to be the x component of the force pushing to the right, A in acceleration, minus the friction force between M2 and the surface pushing in the opposite direction. F net is going to be the force in the x direction minus the friction force 2, which is the force over here between M2 and the floor, divided by the total mass M1 plus m2. A is equal to f sub x, which is the cosine of 30 degrees is 0.866, so 0.866f, that's the force in the x direction, minus the friction force, m2g plus m1g plus 0.5 times the force, all multiplied times mu sub 2, all divided by m1 plus m2. So there's the force pushing the blocks minus the force opposing the blocks divided by the total mass. Now let's plug in all the values and see what we get. A is equal to 0 0.866 times the force 17.66 minus m2g, m2 is 5, so 5 times 9.8 plus 3 times 9.8 plus 0 0.5 times 17.66 the whole thing multiplied times mu sub 2 which is 0 0.2 all divided by the sum of the two masses which is uh, 3 plus 5 and so the acceleration is equal to good thing we have calculators so we have 8 times 9.8 plus 0.5 times 17.66 times 0.2 equals all right let's write that down so that's minus 17.446 subtract that from this product and we have 0.866 times 17 oop 17.66 equals that's 15.29 and it looks like the acceleration is going to be zero because the force is not sufficient to overcome the friction force between the M2 and the surface divided by 8. And so you cannot have a negative acceleration. So therefore, conclusion is A must equal zero because the force simply is not sufficient to overcome the friction force. And that's the way that works.